but at risk. Mm. You know, the puppy with hip dysplasia, the, the dog you just said, there's a little bit of resistance to elbow flexion, maybe a little bit of crepitus, not terribly painful, but the owners haven't seen a thing all going on. No. The perfect opportunity to start talking to owners about how do we create some of the environmental aspects to try to slow down and minimize progression of, of arthritic changes. That's where we can start talking about maintenance of a lean body weight. And what is that, you know, daily exercise, but maintaining and minimizing concussive forces on the elbows. What activities yeah. are okay, but what activities maybe we should avoid so that we don't create promotion of, of inflammation yeah. and worsening cartilage damage. And when we have those patients that maybe we identified it, but maybe they're starting to get a little bit worse or they're starting to have issues. Well, we can redo the, the coast form and say, oh yeah, your grade has actually gotten worse. You know, maybe there's something that we need to intervene, whether it's an analgesic, whether it's an intraarticular injection, whether it's activity modification or something to try to maintain the life of the joint for as long as possible. I mean, that's our goal is, you know, these patients where they've got arthritic changes, we're, we're not going to cure it. We're not going to make it go away. But, you know, what do we do to create the best environment possible for them to have the, the most comfortable uh, quality of life as possible? And in my mind, try to keep them out of the pharmaceuticals or off the pharmaceuticals for as long as possible and only use it when we need to, not just stick them on a pharmaceutical and say, well, that, that's all we can do because we're really not doing anything if, if that's our approach. So we need to take a, a very proactive approach to, to try to identify these dogs. And I think if we can do that, you know, we, we can create good quality of life for them and yeah. also educate the owners along the way, the steps along the way as to what we need to do, because they got to start from the very beginning before things started to become clinically I think relevant. The owners, I think owners really need a visualization, a visualization of what if we ignore it. And sometimes when we do like our owner workshops, you can see people going, well, that's not relevant. That, you know, that doesn't really affect my dog. Look, he's still got a great quality of you almost want to create this little video clip of a crystal ball and the dog walking through the crystal ball and coming out the other side and go, look, this is our opportunity to intervene. If you don't, this is what's going to happen. And if there's any company out there that wants to help us create that, then just high five me. <laughs> because it's needed and we need it in waiting rooms. We need it in vet clinics. We need it on Facebook pages that people can actually see the repercussions of not catching it early. And, um, I was chatting to someone recently, and I think that is that is one of the real problems we've got at the moment is owners understanding the importance. There's that that um, dis dissonance, isn't there, where they're kind of like, oh well, it, it's not a problem at the moment, and then suddenly, you know, well not suddenly, it's like a major major problem, and options are less available, and interventions are more expensive, and potentially less likely to work. Ah, it's so difficult.